good welcome back to invest and trade with Jax. happy tuesday hope everybody's doing well i've been looking at the chart of bitcoin for like the last hour trying to make sense of it from an LAA perspective so i'll show you guys what i'm looking at here so currently we're sitting at 20,238 up 3.61 on the day we're seeing a market cap of 385 billion 24 hour volume 33 0.91 billion so let's hop into the chart so we have pushed above um the start of our wave one which was right here at about 20.2 we pushed all the way up to to about 20.25 so that invalidates that as coming down in a one and seeing a wave two pullback so all of this can be taken out this wave count can be removed here this yellow box can be removed uh, we are pushing up into major resistance we could definitely see some pullback here so now what we would have to be looking at here or what I'm looking at, even these smaller wave counts, like this red wave count, well, we'll focus on this blue wave count for right now. So if we look at the previous high up here at 25K, we came down in a wave one, which is here in white. We had a wave two pullback. That's everything's fine with that. It looks good. And now we're, we're supposed to be coming down in a wave three. So the only count that you'd have to be looking at for an impulsive move to the downside is that this is a wave one and uh, you're still going through the wave two correction, but it doesn't make a lot of sense to me due to the fact of how long the wave count is drawn out. We have our larger wave count, which is here in white, where we had a wave one down and then you had a wave two pullback and your sub wave count, the wave two has been correcting for about 15 days and the larger wave count the wave two corrected for about six days so it doesn't make a lot of sense to me this chip chop sideways price action especially lasting this long for a smaller wave count um, doesn't really suggest to me that we're coming down impulsively what we could be doing is coming down in what's called an ending diagonal and if that were to be the case then we could bottom out just below the previous wave three low which i don't think is likely i think it's a mother much higher possibility we come down to 11 to 13k but i have to kind of look at all scenarios right now and the market is also showing signs of reversal uh, a relief bounce a rally to the upside and i can't ignore that so what you could be looking at here is that this is a wave one down in white this is a wave two pullback and we've come down in a, and we're coming down an ending diagonal this is a three and this is a four sorry guys my magnet is on here so i'll show it to you guys on a cleaner chart here so this would be the wave five down it's called an ending diagonal like a leading diagonal we've gone over them before in the smaller time frames where you've come down in a wave one, this is a wave two pullback. Here's your wave three, this is a wave four, and then you're looking to come down in a wave five to just break that low to complete the wave five, the larger wave count, and then the bottom would be in for BTC. The only problem with that is I don't think it's the likely scenario, but I do need to start giving it more attention here just due to what the overall market is telling me. So if we look at the DXY, we are continuing to come down. I talked about this four hour um, divergence coming all the way back down to oversold, which it has. So we could definitely see a bounce for the DXY, which of course will bring the price of Bitcoin down. Um, we do have support here around 109 to 110. If that support is lost for the DXY and we come deeper, that could definitely be the start of the rally for Bitcoin. But as you can see, every time we have come back down towards this oversold level on the four hour RSI, we've seen a bounce back to the upside right here, bounce back to the upside down here as well, bounce back to the upside. However, I did mention on the daily time frame um, that we we're quite overbought. And uh, we're bound to see some pullback, which is what we're seeing here. And you can see here, every time we got overbought like that, we saw a pullback. We saw a pullback right here before seeing continuation to the upside. So I think the DXY is just pulling back before potentially seeing continuation to the upside. Now, the reason that I think we could see a rally um, towards the end of the month, even sooner, and going into November is looking at other coins in the market. So if we look at something like MANA, you have a bullish divergence on the money flow. Money is flowing right back in while price is dropping as well as on the RSI, strong level of support. There's more coins, Sandbox, you can see, look at the money flow right back in while price is dropping. Money is flooding back into sand. Bullish divergence, relative strength is increasing, strong level of demand. You look at coins like Solana, VeChain, we'll quickly open up Solana here. 
So Solana, you can see we're creating lower lows, higher lows on the RSI. It just, a lot of these coins look like they're setting up for a rally. And um, October, November, they're known for being bullish months. Even December, they weren't in the, la well, October was, but November and December of last year was basically the top for BTC. But if you look back on the chart, November, December, even October tend to be bullish months for crypto, especially um, the towards the end of October and November. But, so it's something I am keeping a close eye on because so many of these coins just look like they want to rally. You know, Sandbox, Mana, I was looking at VeChain, uh, Solana, Engine. If we look at Engine coin, you can see here with Engine, prices dropping, money's flowing back in here. Bullish divergence, strong level of demand and a falling wedge pattern. So many coins in the market are showing signs of revival in my opinion. As you can see here, when we broke down, we saw a nice bounce. We came back down to retest that level of support. Relative strength started to increase as price was dropping and then boom, you saw a relief bounce, you saw a rally. So very similar, we've come down, you'll see this on many, many charts. We've had a nice bounce, we've come down and we're just consolidating and we're coiling up while relative strength is increasing and money is flowing back in. So I do think there's a good chance of seeing a rally. If Bitcoin were to come down and put in a lower low and break this low and then begin its rally, we'd have to make a case for the bottom being in for BTC. Personally, I don't think it's likely anything can happen. We, we also could see a lot of buying pressure coming around the time of the election. I do think it will be a bullish catalyst for the markets here. I know I've been preaching to you guys that we're gonna come down to 11 to 13K, which I still think is likely. But the fact that we're going through this chip chop consolidation, especially if we get rejected here, we come down and we put in a wave five, we slightly break this low, and then we begin to rally, we come up and break this down sloping trend line. Um, that could be a strong sign of at least seeing a nice push to the upside. Will the bottom be in for BTC? Personally, I don't think so. Um, but we'd have to look at some other wave count. But you could definitely make an argument that a five wave move would be complete and we had an ending diagonal in a wave five. If I pop back over to this chart here and remove my little squiggly, I know it's a bit confusing with all of these um, numbers and letters here on the chart. But what you'd be looking at is ending diagonal into a wave five. And then you could make the case that the five way move is complete here and uh, the bottom is in for, for BTC. That's the thing about Elliott Wave is it is subjective and there's no guarantees until you've made like a five wave impulsive move to the upside signifying, giving you a stronger signal that the bottom is in. Because what you could do if we were to see a rally, you could be like, well, the wave three, wasn't complete and now we're going through a wave four rally, wave four correction before seeing a wave five to the downside. Unfortunately, you have to adjust your analysis according to the market, but that's that's just technical analysis. That just That's just the way it goes. So as of right now, what I'm watching here is this descending triangle. Coin can remain above this trend line that we've been getting rejected from. If we have a daily close and we can close another day above this trend line, that could be a sign that the rally is gonna begin. But we are overbought on the four hour and on the one hour. So if we just fall back down into this pattern, then we could definitely come back down to retest this level of support about 18.7K. Um, the RSI, we have a bullish divergence on the daily. It just crossed the 50 line, which is also a bullish signal. If we close out the day here above the 50 line, usually when the RSI crosses above the 50 line with the bullish divergence, it means it's gonna come all the way back up to overbought. Uh, maybe I can give you guys an example. Um, no, that's not really a good example. Give me a bullish divergence. Okay, right here is a nice bullish divergence. We're creating lower lows. This was a summer crash. We're creating higher lows in the RSI. And you can see the RSI was failing to get back above the 50 line. It finally broke above the 50 line. We saw a huge breakout to the upside. So if we close the day above the 50 line, as well as the money flow close above the 50 line, that can be seen as a bullish signal as well. If we close the day outside of this triangle and as well as above the 50 line on the RSI, uh, potentially you could see a rally to the upside for BTC. It doesn't support the wave count. Even even an ending diagonal, it's not supported by a breakout right now to the upside. Um, but I'm just trying to go over what the chart is telling me. The Elliott wave analysis, which is quite difficult to map right now, um, just with this chip chop sideways price action. But that can usually signify that you are in an ending diagonal in a wave five when it's chip chop sideways like that. 
and uh, we did come up and break that high which invalidated this as a one two setup so potentially we could be looking at an ending diagonal for a wave five where we come down in a wave one i'll make this cleaner and more clear to see with the larger wave count in the next video here a wave one a wave two pullback a wave three a wave four a wave five this is the only pattern you can only have a leading diagonal in a wave one and ending diagonal in a wave five where the wave four can overlap the wave one you can't do that in an impulsive move it can only be a leading or an ending diagonal so if you do see us start to get rejected here or we push a little bit higher we get rejected and we come down in a wave five we create a lower low and then we start to break out and come up and break this trend line then that could be a strong sign that we've had a, a, an ending diagonal into a wave five. And especially if we make that five wave move to the upside, then that could be a strong signal that the bottom is in for BTC. I know I've been preaching that we're gonna come down to 11 to 13K. I still think that's the higher scenario, but with the Elliott wave count, if we do complete um, an ending diagonal here, then I might have to change my tune, but we'll have to see what happens. All right, guys, that's it for this one. Big shout out to the Discord. Over 2,000 members posting chart patterns, talking all things crypto. You can get free access if you sign up to Bybit, my favorite exchange for trading, up to $4,500 in bonuses over there. I have a full length tutorial. Email me your sign up email, free access to over 2,000 members posting chart patterns, talking all things crypto. And at the $10 membership, you can get my exact entries, exits, and take profits. Just posted some spot trade signals um, for 10 bucks a month. You can sign up through the Patreon link. All right, I will see you in the next video. Much love. Take care. Mm -hmm.